name's Daniel, I'm down at the bike shed, and this is my V50 from 1969. So with garage space in this town being only a rich man's sport, I had to take this to work uh, to put it in a parts shed. Uh, my boss gave me a little corner to work in, and uh, I, I used a box as a spray booth. Uh, I had an angle grinder as my biggest tool, and uh, I used a whole bunch of very, very, very small hand tools to fabricate all the parts that you just can't buy from Yamaha. And so that makes it real shed built. So, my uh, normal bike is a RSV 1000 factory, so a bit of a weapon, but I'm looking for something more in town. Something that the thermo fan won't burn my leg in summer like my other bike does. So I was looking for potentially a stroker to uh, make a bit crazy for the city. Uh, couldn't find one, the winter was rolling around, needed to get a project. A mate of mine said, you've never actually built a motorcycle before from scratch, maybe you should start in something small. Uh, ha had a hunt around, the week before Christmas, this came up. Uh, basically, it was a barn find, last registered in 1984. Uh, all they'd done so far is found a motor, uh, allegedly an OOR racing motor and uh, they painted it, uh, the frame, and that was where it was at. It was a, four boxes of parts, the guy said I think it's mostly there and it was mostly rusted. So we, uh, the first thing we had to really do was try and get the bike to function again. The rust level was epic to say is a bit of an understatement. So the things that we did started with was actually the wheels is what we started with first. Uh, and the reason for that is the rust was literally pitted. I used an angle grinder to actually get the rust off. Um, but they've come up pretty good and it's better than buying yourself uh, a whole new set of wheels. Uh, we then rebuilt the uh, internals of the forks. You'll see the style of the bike is stylized to actually keep its 1969 character. Uh, you could have put new forks on and a new rear suspension and the bike would handle sweet but then it would look too much like a modern bike. We're trying to keep it 1969 except don't talk about the engine not being 1969. So the rest of it's all completely uh, original. Um, it used to be a 6 volt system, we had to convert it to 12 volts but that means it has a, a solid state battery, the lights actually work properly. Um, and then we basically cleaned it up. So at the top here it has a speedo dial and nothing else. It has a mountain bike handlebar, um, which works. Um, it has a tiny little set of buttons. And the only new thing on here is a quick action throttle. Uh, the other great thing about this frame is it's hollow. So all the wiring has been able to be hit on the inside. Um, I had to patch up the old hole for the air intake. Um, that is a piece of foam. Uh, and then everything basically just shoehorns its way in. The motor, we had to uh, cut a little bit of the frame out to fit it in and shoehorn it in. You'll see that uh, you can't actually get your finger in here, but uh, it works just. Uh, this is uh, a 125 motor. Bit of a spaghetti incident of tubing around the bottom to sort of get it to work. Uh, I had to do some uh, make my own parts because apparently Yamaha don't make parts for 1969 anymore. Uh, including strange things like down here we have a spoke off a bicycle uh, which now keeps my brake light working. Uh, this is actually, uh, a, it's off a plumbing system uh, and that works as well because it's rubber mounted and designed to get very hot for hot water. Um, the exhaust unfortunately I have no idea where it came from, a mate of mine gave it to me and, it, and it, with a bit of playing around it eventually worked. Other than that we kept the line of the bike, you'll see we um, chopped the rear end off here and uh, keeps a nice straight line, takes away this massive bulky part at the end. Uh, and then other than that, we had to fabricate a lot of parts. I had to find special nuts because they don't make them anymore, which you can only buy in Germany. Uh, and then all the chain guard on the rear here, we stripped all that out for get rid of the weights. And now it has a tiny little piece of aluminium that we drilled a ton of holes in to make it even lighter. The reason for that is this bike will probably do something that most bikes don't do here at Bike Shed, wheel stands without the throttle on, because it only weighs 65 kilos wet. Uh, and it's got a tiny little tank. Uh, the tank we had to acid dip for two months because it was totally rusted out, and now it works and it holds a whole four litres. Uh, so you can get it under a fiver if you're a cheapskate and use the cheap fuel, but I only use the high octane stuff and it's just over five quid. Um, yeah, so this is my uh, V50 1969 with a shoehorn motor in, designed for Zone 1. So, we always have requests to start the bike. This one's going to be fairly quiet. It might be a straight through exhaust, but she's just a 125. 
The other interesting thing is the key doesn't go on the front to keep it clean. It's in the side where the old oil uh, indicator used to be. Get ready for the small ball roll. Uh, and then of course a small shameless plug, I'm the uh, Deputy Chairman for the Members Committee here. Uh, you guys should come down, it's first Thursdays, 7 o'clock, come and have a beer, we've got a ton of great stories to tell.